know that we should perhaps start from Adam and Eve, but could you, in brief, in a nutshell, uh, describe a structure of our universe? Well, first of all, it's very clear that the classic Western explanation of how the universe was formed and how the solar system was formed, i.e. the Big Bang and all the rest of it, is uh, complete nonsense. And even some mainstream scientists are now beginning to say that's the case. And uh, I, I've written a lot uh, in my latest book and in, in, I talk about in my current presentations about the moon. Mm -hmm. And the classic mainstream scientific explanation of how the moon was formed, for instance, is, is, is ludicrous. Mm -hmm. it, it talks about uh, the fact that a Mars-type planet hit the Earth when the Earth was forming, and a great chunk of the Earth broke away and became the moon, called the whack theory. Mm -hmm. And what you find when you look at what are supposed to be mainstream scientific explanations, when you take it back, you find that actually it was someone's theory back here, which then through constant repetition becomes accepted fact here, when it's nothing more than a theory. Mm -hmm. There is nothing in that moon explanation that has any basis in fact or supporting evidence whatsoever. It's just a theory. And you find this right across the explanations for how the universe was formed and what the universe is. So essentially all the scientific paradigms, paradigms are lies. What's been missed and what some cutting edge people are now beginning to envelop and encompass is the basic understanding that we are living in a virtual reality universe, like a virtual reality computer game of enormous advancement. Um, and this has been missed up to this point by mainstream science for many reasons, but not least because mainstream science is obsessed with the physical. Everything's got to be physical. What you can touch, see, taste, the five senses. And the truth about what the universe is lies beyond the five senses. Uh, uh, you quote Einstein, with, uh, I believe, uh, reality is an illusion, also, uh, although a persistent one. Yes, uh, uh, what Einstein said with those words, um, that this is an illusion, albeit a persistent one. Okay, so why is it persistent? That's the next question. And the reason it's persistent is because we are living in the equivalent of the wireless internet. Mm -hmm. This universe is, even mainstream science uh, says this, is 99.999% made of something called plasma. And plasma is the vehicle through which electrical signals, electrical communications pass through. Mm -hmm. So the plasma is the vehicle for this electrical communication. We are living in, on one level, an electrical universe. And, and that electricity, information, is in the, uh, the, 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 the atmosphere around us. Our brains work with electrical communication. The body works with electrical communication to the cells. And so the body, I call it a body computer, is the equivalent of a computer picking up the wireless internet. Mm -hmm. For instance, if I get a computer now, a laptop computer, no wires connected to anything, just on its own, and I tune it to the internet, mm -hmm. it will pull out of the unseen. I mean, this television uh, studio building will have the wireless internet. Now, where is it? We can't see it. But you tune that computer to that internet, 
and it will pull out of the unseen and put a complete collective reality onto that screen, which can be picked up in Australia, South Africa, Ukraine, London, Los Angeles, anywhere. It's a collective reality. That is what we're doing through the body computer. We are picking up this collective reality. And so when you look at a computer screen that's picking up the internet, the pictures can look, can look solid. They can look like a solid world on the screen. Um, and in the same way, we are picking up information from this, what I call the cosmic internet. Mm -hmm. The five senses are turning it from vibrational information into electrical information, which then is decoded by the brain into this world that we think is outside of us, because that's the illusion, uh, but actually is only exists in our head, um, only exists when we decode it. And this is why uh, some scientists have said over the years, I think Einstein among them, certainly many, that this reality only exists in this physical sense when it's observed. What I would say, when we've decoded it from the information construct into this holographic reality we call the physical world. And this is why, even though it's a mystery to mainstream science, this is why um, quantum physicists look inside the atom, mm -hmm. which they say, of course, atoms make up this physical world, but inside the atom is nothing. It's just basically empty. Mm -hmm. How can something that's not solid make up a solid world? Answer, it doesn't. It's all an illusion in the decoding process. Mm. And this brings us back to the question of uh, how did the universe start? Well, at this point, we, we can't say for certain exactly how it started, but what we can say is that no Big Bang was needed. Because when you are looking only from the physical level of reality, you're looking for physical explanations. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're looking for an explanation of how the pictures appear on the computer screen, you're not looking for, if you like, a physical explanation. You're looking for an electrical data software information explanation. So this universe was created by some force of consciousness that um, Im inputted the basic information on which the whole thing is based. Um, just as um, you can write a software disk, a software program, you put it in the computer tower and it goes on the screen as the computer decodes the information into um, places, text, anything on the screen. We're doing that. So the answer, where did the universe come from? It came from whoever or whatever um, put in that original information construct which we're constantly decoding into this apparently physical world. So is it possible to say then that matter is energy packed in into information, inside information, or as information? Uh, yes, I would put it like this, that if someone said to me, what is this universe at its foundation, I would say it's information. Someone asked me, what is the wireless internet? It is information. The computer takes that information, turns it into a collective reality. We take that information through the body computer, and, it, and the body ticks every box for a computer system, um, and um, turns that into this apparent reality. Only instead of being on a screen, the screen is in here. So when Einstein said uh, that reality is an illusion, albeit a persistent one, the reason it's persistent is the same reason that when a computer is tuned to the wireless internet, what's on the screen is a persistent decoding of that wireless internet. Um, and so when we look out of the window, we might see a blue car go past the, past the house. 
someone else will see the same blue car because we're all decoding the same um, information. What then happens, this is where the uniqueness comes from, we then decide what we think of that car uh, and who's driving it and how it's being driven. In other words, we then um, view this decoded reality in different ways and that's what makes us different. So from this point of view, what is the human body? Another answer to that question is, who are we really? The real I. The real I is consciousness, awareness. Um, and this is not a body, it is literally an awareness. And so when people have what they call near-death experiences, and they have this experience of withdrawing from the body, and, and, and suddenly experiencing fantastic expansions of their consciousness and awareness and ability to perceive on multi-dimensions. That is the real us, all of us, withdrawing from the lens which is the body. The vehicle to experience this tiny frequency range we call the world. And this is an important point um, for people's perception of the reality we're experiencing when I talk about tiny frequency range. People look out of their eyes and they think they're seeing everything that exists in the space they're looking at. They don't. We are picking up a tiny frequency range um, and only within that is what scientists call visible light um, can we perceive outside of that n tiny band that, that, that of visible light that we perceive reality is an infinitely uh, greater reality that we cannot see and cannot decode. If I'm tuning into channel one on a television uh, screen, I get channel one. But sharing the same space is channel two, three, four, and five, but I'm not tuned to them. Um, and then if I move from channel one with the zapper to channel two, I now get channel two. I've lost channel one, but channel one's not disappeared because I'm not decoding it anymore. It's just um, still broadcasting, it still exists, but I'm not picking it up. And this reality we call the world is merely a narrow frequency band that this body computer is designed to pick up. Um, and anything outside of that, it doesn't see. This is why... Um, People think that they're seeing everything when they look through their eyes. They're not. It's tiny, the band of frequency that we're seeing as the world. So we're seeing what we're tuned in to see, essentially. We are. And, th and this explains many apparent unexplainable mysteries. For instance, when people say um, they saw this non-human entity appear in front of them out of nowhere or, mm -hmm. and then disappear, or they saw a, this, this UFO appear before them out of nowhere and then disappear into nowhere. All that's happened is these, um, these entities, these UFOs, whatever you want to call them, have entered the human frequency range mm. and we start decoding them. So suddenly where, they've come out of nowhere. Where'd that come from? And then it disappears. It's not disappeared. It's left the frequency range that we're decoding, therefore we don't see it anymore. That's what's happening. It's no mystery. And this brings us to something very, very significant, fundamentally significant for human society. And that is this. If I'm a computer programmer who understands how computers work, then I can program a computer to only read that information that I want it to read and therefore put onto the screen as an experienced reality what I want it to put on the screen. In the same way, in China, the people cannot access vast swathes of the internet because it's firewalled off by the government, by the authorities. In the same way, if you understand how the body computer decodes reality, then you can implant programs, what we call beliefs and preconceived ideas, 
and you can get human beings to decode reality to suit what you want, which is control of the human race. And we see this um, in everyday society where someone is born, their parents, not through malevolence, but because they've been programmed to see the world a certain way, they pass on that programming to their children. The children then go to school and teachers who are just giving pe uh, the children the curriculum, the, the information they're told to give them, they are programming in a reality uh, to children through the whole period of the school, college, university system. Because people who've been through that um, pick up the same programming, people's uh, friends, relatives, uh, peers, they're all confirming that re reality. The media is constantly um, bombarding people with that basic sense of reality. And so basically, of course, people in, 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 in the great majority uh, of numbers then see self and the world in those terms. And that's how people go from cradle to grave actually living within a tiny band of possibility and perception which makes them en masse much easier to control and that's why it's done. So how do the very tiny few control the very many? Seven billion at this point. Yes, by manipulation of money and finance. Um, and yes, in some cases, by imposition by men in uniform. But the whole foundation of human control by the few is the perception programming that is imposed upon the many throughout their lives. The programming of their perception is the absolute foundation of human, mass human control. And the basis of that programming is, I am little me, I have no power, what can I do? That, and when we believe that, we have no power. Not because we haven't got power, we have, but because we believe we haven't, and therefore we don't express it. And we just stand, up, stand in line like sheep in a, in a, in a, in a field. Oh and that's why I'll never talk about the conspiracy in, if you like, the five sense world of banking conspiracies and political conspiracies and engineered wars without also talking about the nature of reality because without understanding the nature of reality you can understand the real basis of the conspiracy and how, how, how it actually controls en masse in the way that it does. Uh, since we've started talking about the conspiracy, uh, uh, is it possible to say that then religions were also created as a means of manipulation of uh, and programming, programming of uh, perception? Uh, so do religions carry, bear any spirituality or they don't bear any spirituality at all? This is a very, very important question. Um, yes, religions are a massive form of human control uh, in, in the past even more, but still today, to a very, very large extent. And this is the reason. This infinite reality that we are part of has within it infinite possibility. That's what we are, infinite possibility, having an experience in this world at this time. Oh, gotcha, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's gonna be a re Oh, I gotcha, yeah, I gotcha, yeah, okay. It's just started, the technical, technical interference, cracking and cracking and cracking, when you reach the most important, uh, okay. an important point. Uh, I've been waiting till you, uh, till, till, till you start comparing the body to a uh, space suit. The what? Space suit. The body to the base suit, space suit. Yeah, yeah, because... Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because what has said, uh, you know, I, you, you, I've heard you mention that before, and it's really funny how you, you compare it. And yeah, that's what makes real racism so stupid. So anything that 
takes us from that state of all possibility and brings us down into one possibility is going to diminish the scale and potential of, of, of who we are and what we can do. And what religions are, if you look at them, are what, I have this, this phrase, if someone can tell me what they believe and they can give a name to it, they're in a prison. Because what happens is you say, I'm a Christian, um, I'm a follower of Judaism, I'm a, a, a Muslim. And immediately you give it a name, um, your sense of possibility goes zoom, there. Because now I am not infinite possibility having an experience, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Christian, I'm a Jew. And then the rules and regulations come from that. If you're going to be a Muslim or a Christian, this is what you have to conform to, this is what you have to believe, and suddenly from infinite possibility, we're now in a tiny little box. This is what religions have done. This is what all rigid belief systems do. And so um, these belief systems called religions then start getting policed. Because if you're a Muslim, you can't believe that. You may have had this insight that, hey, I think things are like this. You can't have that insight, and you certainly can't express it, or you're not a Muslim or you're not a Christian, or you're not a, 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 a true Jew, or whatever, this is, or, or true Hindu. This, this is how it works. They become prisons, prisons of the mind, prisons of the emotions, and prisons of perception. And so in answer to the question, can you express spirituality through religion? Well, yes, but it's not the religion. Um, I've met many loving people who, who follow a religion. But in the same way, many other people who've followed religions um, have, have been responsible for some of the greatest mass slaughter in human history. So clearly it's not the religion, it's, it's the person. As Martin Luther King said, um, it's not the color of your skin, it's the strength of your character. I would kind of uh, change that slightly for this subject we're on now it's not the name of your religion it's not the nature of your religion really it's the nature of you that is expressing the spirituality through the religion and it's the nature of you that is causing mass slaughter and control through your religion it's not the religion it's just the vehicle it's you that is making that different so talking about human life then uh, if we are saying, if we are talk, if we assume and accept that it's some kind of game, uh, then there must be a point in this game. What's the purpose of human life? What are we here for? Uh, what is the uh, predestination for of a human uh, predestiny and predestination and the purpose and the point of human life then? Human life is an experience, what we call human life, and it's one of an infinite number of potential experiences within infinite possibility. We are at our core infinite possibility, um, and that's the basis of everything. I, some people call it infinite love, it, infinite possibility, infinite potential. Um, but within that, infinite potential are different potentials, different experiences that can be had. And this is just one of them. This is, this is a, if you like, a, a, a massive cosmic computer game that allows consciousness to have a certain kind of experience. But within infinity are endless other um, virtual reality universes which offer very different experiences. And for whatever reason, and sometimes you go, I would never have made this decision, I would never have made this choice, um, we have chosen to be here. Because there's no one with an AK-47 on some other dimension saying, get in that body or I shoot. We've come here for an experience. The, the, the thing is, 
that which made the decision made it from a massively expanded point of awareness and that which is experiencing the decision is actually experiencing it from a much narrower perspective of awareness and that's why people say I would never have agreed to do this well that didn't that did and um, one of the really major parts of this experience in this virtual reality universe is that it gives an experience of a sense of everything being apart from everything else. Mm -hmm. A sense of I am me, you are you, and there's space between us, and everything is like individual and not connected. Um, because in our true state of awareness, we realize that everything is connected. Mm -hmm. And we are all one consciousness. I am you, you are me, I am everything and everything is me. And that's the same with everyone. And once you, you lose that sense of connection, that sense of everything being an expression of everything else, then you start and you get caught in the apartness uh, perception, that's when division and conflict can start to break out. Us, them, domination over them, when they are you and you are they. But this reality at this time has lost that understanding of everything being connected. But we're starting to get it back. <coughs> Uh, I'd just like to stress one thing, however, that I'm not sitting here like somebody cross-legged on a mountain saying, I've got all the answers, I know everything, and this is how it is. I'm uh, simply trying over the last 21 years, and Ukraine's the 52nd country I've been to researching and talking about this, pushing back the cutting edge of understanding. Um, indeed, it's not really pushing back the cutting edge so much as breaking down the barriers that are set up to stop us understanding the nature of reality. Because we're easy to control if we don't understand it. But I am not here to say um, I have all the answers. I, I, that's, that's the last thing I'm saying. But an important, vital foundation of getting closer to understanding things we don't understand is for the mind to be open and what belief systems do preconceived ideas is they edit reality so that um, it, it's censoring possibility uh, Socrates in ancient Greece uh, was supposed to have said wisdom is knowing how little we know and when you hold that sense then your mind is always open to other possibility without the, the door slamming shut. No, if that's true, then what I believed before must be wrong. I'm not accepting that. Go away. Instead, just flow with it. And it's amazing when you do that how apparently impenetrable mysteries just become logical to you and so obvious. Mm -hmm. In my understanding, we come here for experience and we should enjoy and we should uh, um, enjoy uh, this experience basically uh, getting this experience one of the sad consequences of having the nature of self and reality systematically suppressed is that life can become a race. Um, it's like there was an advertisement on British television uh, a few years ago um, it, for some product or other and it had a baby being born at one end and then it flew like a, 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 a missile right the way through life and then we, it, you know, it grew up, it went to school, got to work, got married, had children, became granddad, and then bang, at massive speed, um, went into the grave at the other end. And in so many ways, um, people are in this race when if we take a step back and we realize that this is just an infinitesimal experience within infinite experience, infinite life, which is what we are, 
infinite awareness, then we can, we can relax a lot more and just, enjoy, as you rightly say, I couldn't agree more, enjoy the experience and realize that, and I found this in my life, that some of the worst experiences in the moment have been some of the greatest gifts that I've had. Uh, I have this phrase, um, life gives you your greatest gifts often brilliantly disguised as your worst nightmare. Mm -hmm. And if we take everything to be an experience and then we move on to other experiences, it, it, it stops us getting too caught emotionally and in every other way in one particular experience. Just an experience. Learn from it, move on. We live forever. The key experience um, we're having at the moment, collectively, mm -hmm. is if you give your power away to others, I'm little me, I've got no power, you give it away to authority figures, to politicians, to doctors, to scientists, then something happens. You have no power. And you give the power to the few to dictate your life. And this is what's happened in every country in the world. The mass of the population gives its power away to authority figures of many and various kinds. The authorities then, the few, dictate to the many. The big lesson, I would suggest that we're being, we're having put in front of our face at this moment, humans collectively, is take your power back and you take control of your life back. Give it away, someone else gets that control. And this is the decision, the, cr the, the fork in the road that we're at now. Are we going to keep going, giving our power away to the few? In other words, in, in which case we're going to live in a global Orwellian fascist dictatorship within 10 years? Or are we going to take our power back, in which case that control system will fall? The key word for me is responsibility. Responsibility is the word that holds the key to whether we take our power back or whether we give it away. Humans have been programmed and encouraged to look for someone else to blame all the time. I'm in this state because of you, because of this, because of that. And what that's saying is, I'm not in control of my life. They are, he is, she is, that is, this circumstance is, I'm not. When, when you, you take your responsibility back and you say, okay, I'm going to take responsibility for the situation I'm in, that is saying, I have power to control my own life and my reality. Because I, have, I take responsibility for what's happened and happening, I can then take that responsibility and change what is happening because the power's here. And humanity tends to want to give power away to others, to politicians, to authority figures, um, because in a way it's, it's their fault that I'm in this state. The few can only control the many because the many have allowed it to happen. We are responsible and we need to take that responsibility if we're going to change it. And one of that, the key areas of responsibility, is get informed.